The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown Podcast presents The Survivor Series with Corey Miller, Vic Miller, and Brad Scott. This week's episode... Roadhouse. This is the Showdown Podcast. I am Brad Roadhouse Scott. I am joined by Corey Roadhouse Miller and Vic Roadhouse Miller. Can you guess what today's uh, movie is? It is the 1989 film Roadhouse starring Patrick Swayze, kind of Sam Elliott, Ben Gazzara. He's saying Elliot isn't in it that much. No. Um, and Ben Gazzara and a bunch of... Uh, uh, Terry Funk. Yeah, don't forget Terry Funk. Terry Funk, uh, a bunch of other people about a bouncer who is brought in to clean up the toughest bar in uh, Missouri. Jasper, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> he left the mean streets of New York City as a bouncer to go clean up Jasper, Missouri. <laughs> uh, so real quick... Uh, have either of you ever been a bouncer? I have. I'm guessing you have not. Maybe. No, Re- I haven't. Really. Yeah, you. You come on. I was. You've been. You've been tossed by a bouncer. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So. Uh, Vic, you have. I have been for a uh, what? What it's was called it called? Zuma Beach Club in Orlando, Florida. Ah, so uh, how was it? Was it tough? Um, was it a tough it establishment? Actually, it actually wasn't like bad. Like there, we had a good crew of people. Like we didn't have very many problems at all. So I you did. didn't have any like PTSD during this movie? Just seeing? No, 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 okay. not at all. Like most of my experiences as a bouncer was was great. Like I got a number of people beat the fuck up, and I beat the hell out of a couple people, and we, <laughs> that all was right. the best part about it. Like you could you could beat people up, and not I don't know if I've, I have you. I don't know if I can imagine angry Vic. I can't either. That's what I was. <laughs> that's a, that's a like, weird. That's a weird thing to try to think about. It takes a lot to get me there, but when I do, it's not fun. He turns anyway. into the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> well, uh, did you now? Did you ever have someone pull a weapon on you? Yeah. Did you ever get stabbed? No, or? never got stabbed. But I did have a guy pull a knife on me, and I had a guy pull this thing. It's called a kubaton. I don't know if you know what that is. I think but basically I saw that in it's Jimkata. a it's a it's a metal bar that goes in your palm, and then it's got two spikes that come out the. Between oh, the holy fingers. shit! He pulled one of those Wolverine on hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was it was pretty interesting. That guy got the hell beat out of him by two cops, though, because when I when I kicked him out, I threw him out the door, and I knew exactly where the cops stood at, and I made him run into the cops. Oh, and, like, yeah. on instant contact to those cops, like, their batons came out, and they just started pounding <laughs> on them. And I just stood at the That's door and laughed blood. at him. Was he a white gentleman? Uh, Hispanic. Ah. Yeah. Puerto Rican guy. Almost got one back, huh? Almost. Uh, <laughs> so, I, did, I did take out a couple a couple of Caucasian gentlemen, though. Uh, so. so before we get, before we, we remember, we got we got an award yeah. season coming up. Yeah, we don't want to. Uh, we there. need to steer away from these controversial <laughs> subjects here on the showdown. The dumb pod, the dumb movie podcast. Yeah. Um, so I've been thrown out of a bar or two <gasps> in my day. I know, it's shocking. Um, I, I got pepper sprayed once my cousin and I got into a altercation, a couple of gentlemen, they, I'm pretty sure they mistook us for other people, yeah, but that's, we were that's really, like always, that's what we were really say. drunk. It wasn't me. It was the guy over there. No, no, no. I think, no, because we didn't have any issues with anyone in the bar. We were confused when they started yelling at us and yeah. then they kind of, one guy started to kind of charge us. So we were like, all right, fuck it. I mean, dumb decision, but, uh, yeah, then they, <laughs> the, the Vic, uh, of the place came out and pepper sprayed us. And that was kind of like game over at that point. Um, we didn't use pepper spray. Never thought about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about fun, it, it's it kind of smart. It the old fashioned way. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, there's no weapons pulled. It wasn't a dangerous thing. 
And I'm sure I was just getting my ass whooped anyway. So it's probably, <laughs> it's probably good for me. Like, uh, you know. Like, I'll take the pepper spray. Just, just take me out. Yeah, that's my excuse. Just take me out. Oh, you see me? I was ready to throw blows. I was ready to, put them, was ready to throw them hands. And then they pepper sprayed me. <laughs> um, so let's get into the show today. We have Roadhouse. And um, we just watched it. So before, uh, before we get to the movie, let's find out a little bit of the guy's history. And a little segment we like to call... The Showdown Podcast History. Corey? Um, I've seen this several times. Uh, usually not all in the same places. Because it come on TV and I'd wa- start watching it for a while in different, different spots. So uh, it's always been one of my faves. Vic? Um, I just kind of see this movie as his uh, trying to get his card back for Dirty Dancing. Oh, like he's yeah, he's manning up. <laughs> yeah, he's getting his man card back. <laughs> yeah, they offered him. They offered him the movie. It was originally going to be like, you know, he was like an inner city teacher. He's like, no, I just want to <laughs> no, no, be no, a no, bar, no. a bouncer who fights people at bars. I need to beat somebody. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, first time I'd ever seen it in life it was just a few minutes ago. Really? <laughs> yep. Never seen it before in my entire life. Had expectations from Family Guy, and that's about it. This has been the Showdown Podcast history. All right, Vic, lead us through Roadhouse. All right, so Roadhouse is about a cooler, which is a lead bouncer by the name of James Dalton, who is working at a New York City uh, nightclub, and he is uh, keeping the peace and showing them how it's done. Uh, When he's approached by the owner of a club in Jasper, Missouri, um... (laughs) To come in and, and be the cooler for his unruly, crazy uh, bar, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he agrees. I can't imagine how much money he had to pay him to get him to leave that gig. Well, $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> and 500 a night, plus he pays medical expenses. <laughs> Which apparently They literally are, said that. That was like one of the first things Patrick Spacey says bypassed. in the movie. I, yeah. I wasn't even paying attention. Apparently. <laughs> I just love, though, how you, the, you're you the guy who's supposed to guide us through the movie. And you the first thing you do is question... <laughs> Is question information they had just given the given us in the, the mind summary. you two and a half hours ago. So um, it's it's, it's okay. It's fair, enough. fair enough. So so it's um, five grand, and then he gets five hundred a night plus. Uh, the guy pays all of his uh, medical expenses. Medical expenses. Which, Frank, right? That's which, his name. Which yeah, starting out um, right from the beginning, he gets he gets stabbed in the oh well, sliced in the arm, has to go in and stitch himself up. So apparently that's that's a, that's a, a most definite thing he needs to have covered. Because he's, there's going to be problems. So he uh, he tells him to hop on a plane and head out to Missouri. He tells him planes are too dangerous um, because apparently his life isn't dangerous enough. He's going to drive out there. Um, he walks out of the out of the club um, and throws the keys to his beater to this old man sitting on the side of the road who uh, kindly asks if he thinks he's a valet and then walks and gets into his Mercedes, which he's got covered and parked in the garage where no one can get to it. Um, it's a little bit of foreshadowing, but it makes sense after you get into the movie a little bit. Um, he hops in the car. He drives to Jasper, Missouri. He shows up in Jasper, Missouri, walks in, and like I said, does what I did when I first got here to Indianapolis and just sits at the bar and watches everything that's going on and surveys the land, sees what's happening. You notices, sat at a bar and watched everything that went around? Oh, yeah. You can't go to another state and not, not you know, look at the... First of all, he goes from New York to Jasper, and we're to believe that he just drives straight through. Yeah. Um, you're not going to just get up and fucking have the energy to go into a bar and hang out. Like you're going to be, I've made trips like that. You'll be exhausted. (laughs) You're going to feel like shit. You're going to hate everyone in life, especially back then. He's probably just having to shift. Oh, I know he had that cassette tape Mm -hmm. that I'm sure was real fun after (laughs) hour five. (laughs) He's got a, he's got a thing, a cassette sitting in the passenger seat and he just put new ones in every couple hours. He couldn't have enough cassettes. There wouldn't be enough room in the car. (laughs) About that, like he and he literally just jumped in the car and left. Like they didn't see, he didn't pack anything. Like where was he living? Like what was his situation when he got in that car? He probably staying off. with Amish people. That's probably his thing. Um, he just there's keeps, not a lot of Mennonites in New York City. <laughs> which yeah, let's just jump to that. So he gets he has to find a place to live. Well, no, hold on. He gets there. 
He he surveys the place. He checks out everybody that's there. Um, he sees what the talent is like, and uh, he he's taking he's taking count. He watches a chick that's working there. Uh, she's doing a drug deal that's gone bad because the chick tries to hand her the money in the middle of the in the middle of the bar. He's watching uh, this guy uh, hit on underage girls. He's watching people, you know, do the wrong things. So he's making a decision what he's going to do. Um, and then he go, that's when that's when he takes off um, and he goes and buys his his beater car for Jasper. He goes over and buys this fucked up old car that he knows is going to get destroyed through the course of him working there because he knows he's going to piss some people off. Um, and then he has to move on to his next job, which is to find somewhere to live. Um, yeah. And so basically he's uh, he's karate John Taffer. <laughs> yeah, kinda. he's he's yeah, Kung yeah, yeah. Fu Bar Rescue. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his identity and job. So, yeah. So he goes to get a place to live and he lives with this Amish dude. Um, who just right away, no, just doesn't put any thought into it. Yeah. And, uh, the guy, remember the guy's like, uh, his application is pretty easy though. <laughs> are you, are you trustworthy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's you're like, going to steal my horses. Don't think I believe that <laughs> <laughs> you can fuck the horses. Just don't take them. <laughs> um, but he, uh, yeah, but he's like no TV and no, no air, no air. To and I'm like, that sounds awful. Yeah. Like I would, I, uh, well, you figure he he's he's home during the day. He's gonna sleep probably all day long. Get up right about the you know right about at sunset. Then head out to the bar. No, he's got to do his night. tai chi bullshit or whatever because <laughs> he's so yeah centered as, as the sun comes up. This is one of those characters that was really popular in the seventies and eighties. He was, and that's all anybody talked about, especially with the whole "just say no" to drug thing. Like you know, the clean cut good guy who doesn't drink doesn't do any. You know, but then it was a shit ton of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. but then we got to like the nineties. <laughs> well, they, they, they were okay to do that. Yeah, but then we got to like the nineties, and even now, it's like now it's like the antihero. Everybody likes the the good guy who's also a bad guy, right. like who smacks a woman around every now and then. But oh, she had it coming. I don't know if they say Is that. that what it sounds that, like that. That was awful. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but <laughs> got to be ready with that volume. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, give it. A, he deserves two. He deserves two. <laughs> oh well, I tried. <laughs> Stay on that horse, young young man. Yeah, he lives in that shitty ass attic. Uh, I mean, it's I a mean, nice if attic. If you really look at it Actually, for, yeah, for, 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 the, top of no, a, for would, the top of a barn, that's pretty I, damn nice. I would take a hotel room with Wi-Fi over that place 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> Even in 89. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he has a place to live. Yeah, He's so got he, a shitty car that it, gets it, destroyed. It's $100 a month. Uh, for everything, including utilities, which he uses up like a fucking madman because he just leaves the lights on, fucking walks hell out. Yeah, that's what I. It's like, yeah, that's real respectful to the Amish guy putting you up for cheap. <laughs> uh, so he also finds out that the main. Um, Although to be fair, that may be his only utility, and he's like, "I'm gonna get my fucking money's worth." Right. He's <laughs> like, "I got to use it up." Uh, but he, uh, they find that you find out that the main um, antagonist in the movie lives directly across the lake from the old man that he just happens to rent the room. Of course, from. because it's Jasper, Missouri. Right. <laughs> Everybody lives three minutes away, no matter where they are, except for those two, which is out in the middle of fucking nowhere, apparently. Which that town is pretty damn sparse if you really look at it. The bar is like here off the off of the road, and then there's like the, the hardware, hardware store is right on the right next door to it. <laughs> Okay, it's a very actual, small area. They use the same gravel parking lot. Right. Actual population for 2012, right? Right. 907. Dude, look back at look back at 89 though when the movie I don't know how. Uh, just put in just put in population Jasper okay. Missouri 89. It okay. should come up with it. So anyway, while you do that, I'll I'll, I'll keep going. Um so he uh, like he comes back the next day for the, the the first day of work with the new crew and he fires the the drug dealing chick. Um, he fires another one of the guys who just doesn't have the attitude, which is Terry Funk. He tells him he doesn't have the attitude for the job because he's too hot headed. He gets rid of him. Um, Terry gets up in his face and lets him know that he's made a mistake, which is the big line for everything. Which Brad said he can act. <laughs> Actually, I said that he can deliver a line pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> for Terry Funk. Because <laughs> and I said because he cuts, he's cut a lot of promos. <laughs> so uh, he leaves. The chick leaves, and he tells him, "Look, we're going to do this thing uh, completely different." We're going to make this place uh, a little less crazy. You're going to be nice to everybody you kick out. You're not going to fight inside the building. You're going to take them out of the building 
and you're going to uh, do things the right way. So once he gets everybody on the same page, um, he lets them start out for the night and he watches again. And he comes up with a couple more people that are just uh, pass, you know, doesn't don't pass his inspection. Uh, one of the guys um, lets some teenage girls in with their J.C. Penny credit card. <laughs> oh yeah, the pedophile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pedophile. Which was he was he was putting his uh, his was that the same chick? Were that was that the same chick or was that another no, another set? Chicks. Okay, Whatever. yeah, because they didn't look they looked way too young for him to be doing that scene. But uh, well, so and all white people look the same to you, apparently. Yeah, well, yeah. sometimes that's something we learned during the movie. <laughs> you, you and him, very much alike. One thousand and seventy-seven. Oh wow, there were more. Yeah, they so left kind of after a waste. that movie. Well, they left you after the movie. Just... <laughs> <laughs> what we mean, like, yeah, they moved there for like, yeah, the they population heard of the movie. was up because of the movie. <laughs> then they were just like, oh fuck! But it's actually Jasper, Missouri, in real life. No, no, and... that's what I'm saying. They took the census while the movie was there. That's why the population is up. No, I know. I was adding to the joke <laughs> oh. and saying why they left was oh, a I year later. <laughs> yeah, no, he's right. He's uh, Corey's 100 percent right. <laughs> Nick, you dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> Corey is quick. Over <laughs> fuck, hit him! Hit him now! <laughs> I was right, I'm not going to be the only you one. jumped all over the joke. If I had my own soundboard, it would have been going off like crazy. <laughs> if you can make one. Like, takes two seconds. Yeah. You have you're just lazy. Phone. I guess if we can't expect him to watch the movies unless we're literally holding his hand <laughs> at, his, at his house. Um, so, yeah. So then, uh, so continue. He, he, uh, he notices that the bartender is skimming. Um, it has this, some whole elaborate thing about how he's doing it too. It's like every tenth pour off of certain bottles, he take pockets the money or whatever, and then he also notices. No, he's John Taffer. This literally was a whole John Taffer. Exactly, you know what? That's what Taffer does. Yeah, really. it's literally exactly what he does. Except for Swayze didn't send in his two friends from uh, New York to, to pretend to be customers. Or Maria Menounos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he. Uh, he also notices that one of the uh, one of the bouncers has disappeared, so he finds him in the storeroom, um, having at it with some chick that had just come in, um, which he proclaimed he was on his break. Uh, so he just told him to stay on his break <laughs> to get out. So he got rid of two more. The problem is, is that bartender is the nephew, the the low constitution nephew of the main antagonist, the bad guy, the big bad for the movie. So that's obviously going to cause some problems, and he's. He's pulling his his rank when he tells him that he needs to leave. And he's like, I didn't hear you say that to the boss, man. And the boss goes, well, you need to get out. So he finally leaves. And that's that's what kicks off the whole kick starts. The whole that's ridiculousness. Just, just like on Bar Rescue when Taffer's like, you need to fire him. <laughs> oh, OK, do it. Fire. Him. And his face gets beat red. Roll out. So he just wants run in there and starts Bro, kicking people in the face. Out. He, just, Bro, out. he just starts kicking people in the face. <laughs> so um Swayze then, you know, he they go about their night, they they do their thing. Um next night comes in uh, another group of uh of the bad guys buddies. Uh, I guess the, the main bad guys henchmen show up. They come in and one of them has the most ridiculous like razor blade toad uh Cowboy boots I've ever oh, seen in my boot. life. Yeah. yeah, they that, weren't even like cool. Like where you step on it and the knife comes out. It's just like a blade sitting there. in the front well, of it. Well, <laughs> and Dalton noticed it from halfway across yeah. the bar. I don't know, but I don't know if he was necessarily going to look cool as much as he was trying to stab someone no, in the no, no. stomach I'm with the foot. Like you see these things in movies, like where they're like they'll have a knife in their shooter, like they step on it a certain way and it clicks out. It's really cool. This thing yeah. is just like no, he, Vic. The budget they had was to be in Jasper, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> they probably, that's probably why it wasn't a bar that needed to be rescued in new york <laughs> they're like just stick where can we afford jasper misery all right <laughs> we get tax breaks <laughs> so they come in uh he notices it right away and i don't know what the big the big guy bouncer's name is but he uh he shows him he shows him that he has it so they walk over he tries to stop him from coming in and the first thing this dude does is try to kick patrick swayze with this razor blade shoe of his and he pops his knee and uh, drags him out of the bar. Everybody else follows him out the bar, um, and they proceed to get into a big fight with the uh, the four uh, bad guys that uh, or the four henchmen that showed up to to wreck the bar. Until the music stops, and that's deemed the and, end of the fight. Yeah, until the exact moment the music stops, and everyone's cool. Then you know, everything's all right now. We're all, all right. good. I guess it's time to finish. <laughs> 
Um, so they report back to the big bad guy, the boss, and uh, <laughs> he gets pissed off at him because apparently it's okay for his nephew to be a pussy, but it's not okay for the, the them to be pussies because uh, he beats the crap out of one of them because he got his butt whipped by like the baddest bouncer in New York City. Which, I mean... Well, that happened after they went there back to the bar after the dude got fired. They all went back and they were in the office. And then after that, then he, they all got, then that one dude got beat up by the guy across, from across the pond. What? Hold on. Yeah, remember, the dude again. got fired. Yes. Then they sent the thugs. Yes, that happened. And the, the thugs but got then beat they up. came back the next day... And they were all in the office, and he was saying he's getting his job back. And then that's when Patrick Swayze beats them all up. And then they go back to the one dude's house, and the one oh, guy. Okay, I gets, got. Yeah, I did. I did swing that last. The 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 razor blade battle happened after all that. Was that for me? That was from the listener for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's listener singular at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the rest have dropped off. Let's just get through this goddamn. Okay, <laughs> I, I was I was going until I got stopped. So. Here's the thing, I got on Corey because I'm like, you got to stop showing your hand with the movie if you want to create any t- sort of, you know. Uh, suspense at the end of the show for what the verdict's going to be. You can't kind of come out the gates talking about, oh, like during the history portion of the show, be like, oh, you know, fucking hated it, you know? Uh, this movie, though. <laughs> oh, God, here it comes. I, I can't. I can't. The I I, th- I thought I've been pretty neutral. I've just, I've talked about it. I've made normal jokes about making any movie. But listening to you guys right there just get confused reminded me of how I felt watching this entire piece of shit. <laughs> so I say we just we, we do a first for the Survivor series. Oh god. Uh we just call it now <laughs> and then just go back because we're gonna lose everyone if we go through this entire fucking it's a long, confusing way to go, and I can see that road ahead. And it just Roadhouse. I feel like I'm gonna fall asleep. Roadhouse. Uh, so I say we just we give out the uh, we we shake it up. It's time to shake things up a bit. Wow. Okay. We give our results and then we just discuss. Yeah. Because otherwise, this, this is it's gonna snake. All right. So let me let me see if I can fast through the whole thing so they get to the end of the story. There we go. As Don't quickly win. as possible. <laughs> well, as quickly as possible. And if I if I miss, feel anything, free to use Wikipedia as a guide because <laughs> I've been using it. And I'm like, why am I so much further ahead? Oh, it's because I want to be. I'm at the credits. <laughs> so uh, all right. So where were we? Okay. So uh, okay. So they. Go back. They have, they get into a big fight. Uh, they they go back. Um, the bad guys come back in again. They get into another big fight, um, which it happens several times. And this is basically just a big head to head fight on bad guys versus the the bouncers. They go. <laughs> they they uh, they they go back outside. The uh, Red's bar blows up next door. They run outside. He thinks bar Red's in it. He's not. Um, and then they figure out that he's basically squeezing everybody for more money. Um, and he wants everybody, nobody wants to pay him. So he's going to start trying to, to take down everybody. Um, so, <laughs> throws me over the time. so, uh, Dalton gets mad about this whole thing and he tells, uh, um, he stops the beer, the, the alcohol from coming in. So Dalton calls someone and says, Hey, I need you to send alcohol. Uh, a friend of his gets alcohol there. They try to stop the shipment. That's when Sam Elliott shows up and helps him defend the alcohol shipment. Um, and becomes the, the, and they all find out that he's like the, the baddest, true of alcoholic. Badass, the baddest of badass coolers and, and his mentor. Um, he introduced him to the doctor, which is his love interest, who he meets when he gets sliced on, in the, on the ribs. Who Vic thought was Ashley Simpson? Yes. Gets sliced under the ribs and gets stapled all shut. All people look the same. And he ends up screwing her and uh, they fall in love. He doesn't want to leave, even though he feels bad because he thinks that he's going to do something bad. So the last time he was in love, he killed someone. By ripping their throat out. <laughs> let's, not, let's not kill the lily. Um, and then he, uh, <laughs> they, the bad guy decides, I'm going to take out the girl. I'm going to take out. Uh, I'm going to take out your mentor. Which one's it going to be? He says, I'm going to flip a coin. He flips a coin. He doesn't tell him what it is. He shows up, and Sam Elliott's going to have the shit beat out of him. So he leaves him at the bar unattended, and tells him to drink one beer, only one beer. Where they don't lock the door. Yeah, of course. And he leaves to go see what's to go check on the doctor, who's mad at him because she just watched him rip the throat out of the bad guy's main henchman, who's supposed to be the big bad big badass of the group and he killed him threw him in a lake and shipped him back to his boss 
So she's mad at him, won't talk to him. So he goes back to the bar where he finds Sam Elliott stabbed through the chest and finds out that it was Tails and Sam Elliott lost. He goes to the house. He drives his Mercedes, a really nice car that he was hiding in the, in the barn, through the wall, jumps it over the wall. They blow it up midair for some reason. And uh, he then sneaks into the house and starts taking out everyone, which you don't see. You just find two guys laying down on the ground. The end. <laughs> You can't get through so that. So basically, ba- yeah, basically it wraps up with it's all happily ever after, right? He dies. What? The guy, the, the bad, bad guy, guy dies. Yeah. yeah, and they all all of the the, biz- the four businessmen in the town all shoot him. So they're all they're all complicit. And it ends with them in the lake skinny dipping. In front of Ash- the blind Ashley guy. Ashley Simpson and Swayze. Right. Where the dead guy was thrown into. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'll go first. Okay. Because I think it's been pretty apparent. Yeah, it's really um, obvious where you're going. This, yeah, this is, this is my decision. The first time I've ever seen it, I'd always heard it's just this, oh, it's a classic action movie. I have to see Roadhouse. I have to see Roadhouse. Everybody always does that with movies. I have to, how do you not claim Roadhouse? Uh, oh, Jesus, they sound like that? Yeah. That's what I think of Roadhouse. <laughs> uh, am I not clear enough? Jesus. <laughs> okay, that one was a little weird. Uh, <laughs> I like that Kalista made an appearance. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I hated it. I thought it was so fucking boring. I did not think the action was what uh, everyone said it was. It, it didn't live up to the hype. Uh, I thought Peter Griffin. Uh, would have been much better. Uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Um, so that yeah, that honestly, that part of Family Guy is the best thing I think that came out of that movie. <laughs> so I, it, it did not survive for me, Corey. Well, as I said before, um, you know, throughout the years when it's been on TV and whatnot, I've always stopped and I've always watched it. And um, and but this first time I've actually seen it from start to finish. Still like it. It's a thumbs up for me. Keep in mind. It's one of his favorites. That's what he said at the beginning. But it's, you know, if, I, I've, if I, I've seen it in bits and pieces when it's been on TV, it's one of my favorites. How many, how many Blu-rays and DVDs do you own over there? Uh, I have not counted. Uh, give me, give me a, a ballpark minimum. Uh, at least 2,000. Between, at least 2,000. Between the two. How many of them are Roadhouse? None. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't own that? No, I actually don't. <laughs> so, Vic, what do you think? It's one to one. <laughs> All right. So, I, I being like, I remember watching this movie back in the day and thinking, oh, you know, it's it's a movie that's got tits, so you're gonna watch it. And I remember thinking that, oh, it's got you know supposed to be action, fighting, all this stuff. And again, just like you said, you got to see Roadhouse. It's one of the greatest bouncer movies ever. And being a bouncer, I was like, all right, I'll watch it. I watched it, and uh, I have to agree with you, Brad. <laughs> I so I've not, never been happier for a movie did not survive make it at all. Damn it. <laughs> it's so bad on and it's not. But here's the thing, but it's not so bad. It's good, right? It, it doesn't, doesn't round get, the corner. It does. It doesn't yeah, the it corner. doesn't. It's stuck in that. It hit the warning track and then ran into the wall and gave itself a concussion <laughs> because it forgot what the fuck it was supposed to be through the entire thing. I could not follow. I kept going. Okay, wait, why are they mad now? Why is someone, like, why do these guys keep just going to get their ass whooped? Uh, what? Next of Kin, like, the movie Next of Kin he did, I think, just before this one, like, that one was so much more enjoyable than this one ended up being. It's ridiculous. Well, I, I'll admit, there's some flaws in it. <laughs> I still enjoy it. How many more can we again, point out for you? <laughs> again, it's supposed, how, what, what number is it on your top 100? Oh, I was about to ask that. Yeah. What? Not on the Hold top on. 100. Only, doesn't own it. Only watched it bits and pieces when it's been on TV. I never said I'm, I make sense. No, we, yeah, we, we definitely agree with that statement. But it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I like it. For an 80s movie, it's got to watch favorites. Roadhouse. Yeah. No, it's not even a good 80s movie. There isn't a whole lot of 80s about it. It's, it felt to me more like a 70s movie. Maybe, that was, maybe that's what Probably because of the Amish bullshit <laughs> and the lack of all technology. <laughs> no one in a suit with an oversized cell phone which was disappointing no cocaine really oh that's true um so yeah it was missing that was a lot of the 80 staples were not there yeah i so it does not survive um well that's not true there was cocaine you just didn't get to see anybody do it because she was she was selling bindles 
Oh, well, but I mean, <coughs> that's, that's not 80s cocaine. Yeah. 80s cocaine is somebody in a bathroom. <laughs> With a rolled up yeah. dollar bill and yeah. lines. Yeah, <laughs> off, the, off, the, off the toilet There seat. is enough tits there for somebody to do a rail <laughs> off the of one of them. Um, but it, yeah, it just... It, it just, it's one of those overrated movies to me, and it's one of those movies that then when I hear somebody tell me about some other movie, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Now <laughs> I have to see it. Yeah, it's a piece of shit, I can tell. Like the, You know what you should do next time you're at a club and somebody says you should see this movie? Make mental note of it, bring it to us, we'll watch it on the show and see if it really is that good. Well, it's definitely no Steel Dolan. Well, right now, Bad Santa would lead that list. Uh, my friend Mark, for years has given me shit about not seeing that movie. And at this point, I will not watch it out of spite. I thought you had seen it when we did our episode. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Interesting. Never seen it. But there there have been times where it's like, nope, didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't watch that movie out of spite. All right. Just because he said that. I've, I mean, I've seen a couple of scenes on Comedy Central, so I guess it's one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> that was a shot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Needs two. Um, but, I mean, by the way, what you said this is one of the best bouncer. Somebody said this is one of the best bouncer yeah. movies. What's the other bouncer movie? I don't know. Movies? That's what I'm saying. Like, I've, I've strip not really seen a lot of, I don't know. Players Club. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> this was just, I don't know. I honestly never got the whole appeal of Patrick Swayze. Maybe because I didn't, maybe I was too young. But I am not a huge fan of Ghost. Well, see, and it's Ghost, chick, I don't think it's a bad movie. He's a I chick just, flick thing. Like, he's he's one of those people. Of pre there. Channing Tatum, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. He's one of those people, like, girls loved all the movies he's in. And, and God, if you even mention Dirty Dancing to anywhere near a vagina, and it's going to freaking go crazy. <laughs> Sam Elliott, to me, also wasn't the best choice as the badass old guy. I, I wish he would have had his mustache. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Pat Morita would have been the better choice. I mean, I think he would have been better. It would have been better if he had have been tougher. Like if he had to just like whip the shit out of everybody and no one touched him. He just stood there and took punches. That was about it. When we recast this movie, we're just going to say, uh, actually, this time around, we're going to fire whoever came up with the idea to even remake this movie. <laughs> and we're going to save everybody. They're probably going to probably do a, a, another fucking sequel right or remake no uh you're not looking at imdb are you no oh here we go yeah oh ronda rousey oh god ronda rousey uh, so great we're gonna have men beating up ronda rousey during a movie for a little bit right because she's got to take some hits i don't know how they're gonna work that are they gonna flip all the roles and like all the bad dude that's gonna be bad they're gonna that's gonna be awful they're gonna have her beating up guys to show how tough she is so that's what the whole thing's gonna be about it's like when she was in uh was she in the expendables was it her yeah yeah it's gonna be the same thing yeah but they're gonna take a lot of criticism because those guys are gonna have to fight back so oh this is a movie where guys of course they're gonna fight back she's just gonna beat them dude people flipped out because apocalypse was holding Mystique by the throat for an X-Men billboard. <laughs> People lost their shit. <laughs> that's I am true. not uh, joking. No, true. I know. I know what a, you're about. A comic book villain god. I have a feeling, though, when they look at Ronda Rousey, they're not going to be like, oh, she's, she's, she's going to be, she's abused. She's... This chicken wouldn't think that, out. I shouldn't think that about Jennifer Lawrence. She survived the Hunger Games. <laughs> and they're mutants. <laughs> yeah. You can't use that term. <laughs> <laughs> Only Vic can use that term. <laughs> you can say mutas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can yeah, say that Ronda humans. Rousey remake is going to be god awful, right? Yeah. I mean, that movie's going to be horrible. Well, so far, we've got the horrible Cujo remake, and now we've got the horrible Roadhouse remake. Makes you scared for the It remake, right? Ugh. I mean, well, I suppose that's, that's been. Re- oh no, no, I'm, I'm thinking of the thing. Yeah, yeah they're the supposedly supposedly they're doing well from other people, but I don't know. Um, uh, I'm excited for the Blair Witch movie. Let's just talk about that. <laughs> that's better than Roadhouse. Well, Actually, we'll talk about that on the other on. side. Yeah, we'll talk about that on the other side <laughs> of the of the break. Yeah. Um, are we about ready for the break, or yeah. how much time we got? Let's hit it. You ready? All right. Uh, well, we will be right back. You are listening to the Showdown Podcast. <laughs> After these messages, we'll be right back. Tickets are on sale now for the third annual Shocktober in Irvington, presented by 
the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Join the hosts of the Obsessive Viewer on October 14th, 2016 at the Irving Theater for a one-night event screening of short horror films, including the premiere screenings of J.P. Lex the Roman, the latest entry in his cross-medium Elsewhere World universe, as well as the latest slasher from Snapshot Productions and Billy and Brandon Watch Movies. All of this and so much more. Come celebrate the horror genre in the historic Irvington area and get a chance to meet the filmmakers with live interviews after each screening. You can also win DVDs, Blu-rays, and gift cards to Irvington businesses. Tickets are on sale now at shocktoberinirvington.com. All proceeds will go directly to the Irvington Historical Society. And we will see you at the Irving Theater on October 14th. That is, if you dare. It's commercial time for the Showdown Podcast. Vic! You can find me on social media as at MillerKing51 or on Xbox One or video games as Black and Angry. That's B-L-A-Q and Angry. Corey? You can find me at <laughs> Roadhouse. You can find me at BradScottComedy.com and find me at BradScottComedy on Twitter and Instagram and uh, Comedian Brad Scott on Facebook. Corey? You can find me on <laughs> Roadhouse. You can find the showdown at the Showdown Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and the Showdown Podcast on Facebook. Click like somebody should. All right, go ahead, Corey. All right, you can find me on Twitter and on Letterboxd at NKO Gonzo. All right, let's get back to the show with this p- piece of shit movie Corey chose. Welcome back to the showdown. It's a very interesting episode because we already know how everybody feels. This movie did not make it into the Hall of Fame. It sucked so bad that we got rid of it early. Yeah. And uh, it's one of Corey's favorites on his birthday. Yes. Um, We forgot to mention this is the Corey Miller. 68th year of life celebration spectacular extravaganza. Happy birthday, Corey. Happy birthday, Corey. Happy birthday, Corey. There you go. I never, I never should have said anything at all. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, our, Corey, you, how's it feel when we have like 20 more years before you die? Oh. <laughs> How does it feel to get coffee for thirty cents a cup at McDonald's? <laughs> um, you make good application and to sit with the old people in the morning. <laughs> how does how does it feel to hold up people at Marsh because you want to use a personal check and you wrote the wrong date in ink? <laughs> Not my fault. Uh, how does it feel um, to to know that we had to record this podcast at four o'clock because dinner's in a half hour and, <laughs> and bed, bed is in two? two. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel? Um, okay. I, I was going to say, you're going to run out of I, time. Well, I could probably come up with more if you really want to give me time. How does it feel to have the last AOL email? <laughs> that's not, How does it, that's not funny. I that, really do. That you access, that you access through your, uh, your disks. 56K modem. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, okay. So we're back. And um, before we get to talking about interesting things. I wanted to shit on this movie a little bit more. 
<laughs> don't hold, no, Brad. Don't hold back. Tell us how you tell really us how feel. you really uh, feel about first this. First of all, this movie was way too long. Yeah, there two was... hours, and we didn't discover that until after an hour. An hour in, I was I was like, well, maybe this movie's only like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. I and thought I, I was... asked how much longer, and when you pulled that up. I felt like when I was a kid and I had to go to church and I thought the pastor was wrapping it up with like this <laughs> prayer, but then he'd open up another chapter from the book of Leviticus and <laughs> I was just like, no, like, let me go. <laughs> yeah, I thought, it, honestly, I thought it was between 120 and 130 and it turned out to be like 150. There were at least 10 to 15 scenes you think they probably could have deleted oh, out yeah. of the movie and, and saw, solved it's that like problem. That was a real long version. I'm going to randomly sit on the hood of the car looking out into the sunset. sunset. It was so awful. <laughs> and how everywhere. they must. This is why they this is why the movie sucks so bad. because They blew the entire budget on explosions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen so many things blow up and then continue to blow. up. And you figure by the third double explosion, you might give it a minute before <laughs> you run up next to it. And not one person got hurt ever. <laughs> but come on. Those explosions were cool. The, the helicopter flying over to establish that the guy likes to be a dick and scare the horses. Yeah. Flies over and scares the horses again just to emphasize that. Could have been cut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and let's not talk about the weird ending where they all just commit murder. Like, they all lynch and shoot this guy. It's like the purge. And, yeah, I mean, and, like, you'd be like, okay, well, the, the guy did have a gun pointed at Patrick Swayze. I mean, maybe the third or fourth <laughs> shotgun blast was a little much. Yeah. Uh, but you at least... Like, they're supposed to be good people, right? <laughs> then they're all just like, oh, I didn't do anything. Oh, I didn't either. And yeah. the cop's just like, oh, well, I guess <laughs> I guess the richest man in town is dead. Who cares? You know, like, <laughs> all right, a, case closed. Nobody saw anything. It was a weird, uh, yeah, it was a weird thing. Yeah. So, okay, right. I'm done shitting on this man. All right, It's good. just so stupid. <laughs> it had no point. The whole plot was, like you said at one point, this whole thing could have been avoided if he didn't fire the guy's nephew. That's it. That's what sparked this whole thing. Move him to day shift. Well, like, well, that or like, give him a raise. Look, I'll give you, I'll give you extra money. Just stop taking out of the damn till. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was just oh, so bad. Um, so, and why didn't he warn him of that guy? Like, why didn't he was like, look, this dude is the nephew of like the biggest asshole in town. No, I remember they did kind of keep warning him, but well, he just kept always being like. I but it was after here yeah, every time. It was after the fact. Yeah, though. she did it. She said something. The one girl said something after he did it. Yeah. Oh, he shouldn't have. Hey, can we talk about how that doctor looks nothing like Ashley Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> like not even close. I gotta look and see what Ashley Simpson looks like. It's I don't know so why. bad, Vic. You're so off. Well, I have I have forced one to cry. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we pointed out during the break. Vic has like that. You know the thing when you get really tired, like kind of one. You know, like one of your eyes like that. This guy called Forrest Whitaker eye. Vic Vic had it going. <laughs> I get that too. But it's just, it was a bad movie. It was confusing. That plot. The dude does the giant from WCW thing and drives the monster truck over all the cars oh, at the yeah, dealership. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. It's just so stupid. And it's like not even good, stupid. Like, Sharknado's a good, stupid, bad movie. This movie's not that because this movie tries to be. It More tried, than it is. It tried to be like a Sylvester Stallone type movie. Yeah, exactly. But you need Stallone for that. Yeah. 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 And when I was, you know, when the I problem was, is we could understand everything Swayze said. Yeah. And and I could, <laughs> and that's why I, I kind of lumped this in this movie in with some of those eighties movies that. You know. So do you think Swayze should have been in? Uh, do you think Swayze should have been in Expendables? <laughs> oh, he could have been. <laughs> Is he dead? Been, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. He died in like oh nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. He died yeah, then, the first. Yeah, time. put him in there. Fuck it. <laughs> Give him a hologram. Hologram. <laughs> um, Make him the Charlie. <laughs> so, what are we moving on to? Or did you have any? Did you might have anything else? Well, we do have uh, about this piece of shit about this movie. No, <laughs> Corey. No. Did you Come guys? On, did try you to, guys try to persuade us? Did you guys get uh, your passes for this week? Well. Uh, you mean for three weeks ago? Well, yeah, but I mean, come on. We're, we're, we're pulling down all the, the fourth walls and curtains for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm in no mood to try to fool our audience tonight, Corey. <laughs> I, I guess not, no. no, we will get those when we get there at the, to the show. When you get there? When we get to Horror Hound, yeah. 
We're on a list. Remember? I'm not talking about that. What are you talking about? You guys didn't get the tags on Facebook? Oh, oh for Blair Witch? Yeah. No, uh, because they're already a waiting list, and I, it wouldn't work for me. I kept getting an error message when I clicked yeah, on it. Yeah, those things, they go like that. If you like, As soon as you did it, actually, just so you guys know, if you go to that actual site, you can request more than one set of tickets. No, so they only you, let me do two. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, but that gets four people. No, 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 no. It's two tickets, two people. Oh, really? They only had, You only had an option for one or two. Uh, I got two. Man, we break a the, pool cue, throw it between you. The, this, this is in reference to We've already to established I'm going to win that. So, you know, let's hand the ticket over. <laughs> this is in reference to a link that was on Facebook for a sneak preview for Blair Witch. Even with his Forrest Whitaker eye, I'm still going with Vic. <laughs> take you out. <laughs> he's like, he's in your corner going, just stay to his left. Stay to his left. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is. It's an advanced screening for the Blair Witch. I am super excited about. Um, it was originally called The Woods for a while. Like, they were tricking everybody, putting out little teasers um, about what is this called one of the scariest movies of all time. And then just a few weeks ago, they were like, oh, we fucking totally fooled you. Like, <laughs> it's the new Blair Witch. So yeah. the Blair Witch Pride, the, the, the second one, Blair Witch 2, whatever it was. Book oh, Shadows. Book of Shadows. Book of Shadows. Ugh. So Ugh. they're like not going. What? I like that one. Really? What? Yeah. No. you got to be kidding When did you watch it last? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah go watch, watch that, that again. again. Yeah. That's bad. It's, it's, like, hor- it's, really it's bad. like horror roadhouse. Yeah. Roadhouse. What? <laughs> <laughs> So you are convinced that they're not they're, they're just remaking the movie altogether? No, 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 no. It's no, a sequel. sequel. Oh, it is a sequel. It's yeah. Heather's brother is going to figure out what happened to uh, her, and they run into the Blair Witch house, and it has like all the callbacks, those little stick people. But now the stick people have powers and shit. Like they've been working for the last like the one years, girl, they... like because the, the <laughs> one girl like is like you're the one that did this, and she's. Breaks the stick person and throws it, and then another girl breaks, so it's like a voodoo thing. Uh, but it looks it looks really good from all the previews, and all of the reviews have come in that have been overwhelmingly positive. We'll see. And finally, like I felt at the end of that marathon of mental... Uh, just mental challenge. Anguish. Uh, I can't even think right now. Do you, a- feel, do you feel like you've been roadhouse to the head too many times? Yeah. I got roadhouse. I got I got uh, CPE. <laughs> What's CPE? I don't know. I was changing the P to Patrick, but I don't remember what the other two stand for. <laughs> so I don't know what the I don't know what the CTE stands for. I mean, I know what it is, but I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> I got CP Swayze. That's good. C.P. Swayze from this movie just kicked a bunch of the head a bunch of times. Oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to get there. <laughs> Corey has picked the oldest and worst movies for these Survivor Series episodes. I think Vic's been, Vic's been on fire. His, uh, <laughs> his picks have had pro- provided pretty good content. I wonder if we didn't say anything, if people could guess who picked what movies. Mm. You know what? You're not going to do it anyways, but tweet us and uh, let us know who you thought picked what Survivor Series movie uh, using the hashtag SSSP picks and then the name. That's Survivor Series Showdown Podcast picks. SSSP picks and then the hashtag the name. (laughs) All right. For, we need to end this. Yes, we please, need to we please. need to just crash this thing into a tree, blow it up, and uh, <laughs> if you're considering us for an award, please listen to a different. We are episode. sorry, <laughs> but we had fun, right? Yes. That's that's, that's, that's all that matters. About. And it, you know, what? this will kill some time. Um, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, dear Corey. Cha, cha, cha. Happy birthday to you. What's the cha, cha, cha? Is that Jason? No. You never heard the birthday song with cha, cha, cha after? Little kids I thought it was time. Jason. Ha! No. Ha! Little kids do that all the time. They say cha, cha, cha. It's a birthday thing. You guys, I worked in the arcade. Is that, that like, is that like, uh, uh, 
What is it? Saul! 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 Oh, you know what I'm talking about? No, but that sounds like Bill Cosby. Is that like the... It's that one... Whatever that is, the... Uh, uh, the the Margarita song. Or whatever. Oh, the Jimmy Buffett song? Yeah. What do they Margarita say? Margaritaville? Yeah, what do they say? Fuck if I know. <laughs> you know the just, chant, Vic? Just because I'm white doesn't mean I know what, what the chant. Uh, I'm black, so people, I definitely <laughs> don't know it. Uh... Some whiskey with salt, salt, something about salt, and then people go salt, salt, salt. Probably. Or ba da 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 da. Jimmy, D- Sweet uh, Caroline. Yeah, Neil Diamond. Ba ba ba. Wait, uh, what is it? Sweet. S- Car- There's a part of the people add into that song ba, ba, ba. though, right? Isn't there a part of that song people add into? Yeah. What is that part people add a Sweet Caroline? You get were asking questions. Drunk. It's like get drunk. <laughs> So good, so good. Sweet Caroline. So good. Ba, yeah. ba, ba. Your times never feel so, so good. good. So, so good. good. So, so good. Yeah, I mean. blah, 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 blah. I don't know. <laughs> this has been the Showdown Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Neil Diamond Talk. I don't know what the hell just happened. For everyone here. <laughs> just here. I'm along for If you're still listening, God bless you. And uh, this is the Showdown Podcast. We will talk to you next time. May all your downs be show. And your cast be pod. (laughs) And your pods be cast. (laughs) Good night! Peter, I don't think you should be driving with your feet. (laughs) Roadhouse. Wait, why are you taking the back way home? There are so many turns. (laughs) Roadhouse. 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 Roadhouse.